Alexander Calder was an American artist who loved the circus. He created his own little circus with found objects and wire that he wrapped together. These sculptures were called kinetic sculptures because they moved. Today we're going to create our own sculpture of a lion using some bits and pieces of things found in the art room. Today we're going to create a little lion after listening to our story about Sandy Calder and how he would take little bits and pieces and connect them together to form his circus animals. We're going to use a popsicle stick, a tongue dispressor, some pipe cleaners, and paper for our lion's face. So first step, get your little white paper. All right, we'll grab our tracer. We're going to place it in the center of our rectangle. Using our Sharpie marker, we're going to hold the tracer and trace the rectangle around like that. Now we can go ahead and do our lion's face. Let's start with a couple circles for his ears. And we'll add a nose. Here's the center. I'm going to go down just a little further so it's not exactly in the center and do an upside down triangle. From the triangle, the bottom, I'm going to this corner and then this corner to form our mouth. If you want to go ahead and add some teeth, you can use a zigzag line. And then we can give him some eyeball. Well, actually, let's do the bridge of his nose. From this end of our nose, we're going to go all the way up. And we'll do another vertical line right next door. And now we'll add our eyeballs. Two dots with circles around. And if you want to give him some eyebrows or eyelashes, that's up to you. If he's angry, Maybe he has eyebrows like this. If he's worried, maybe it's like that. Or maybe he's just looking intently at what the ringleader is doing. I'm going to soften him up a little bit. All right. I can go ahead and color the inside of my mouth. I want or I could use my crayons. Oh, I forgot his whiskers. We'll do some whiskers like that. I'm going to use twistables to color this guy in. So I'm thinking about my tiger and the colors he could use. I'm thinking about my warm colors, my reds, my yellows, my oranges, and some browns. I might want to go ahead and do his little nose with the red and I know when I color I do edges first and then I think about what color do I want my line to be maybe yellow I'll do my edges first or I could use brown or if you wanted a completely different color that's on you you get to decide at any time I need to get a little more I just give this a little turn. I don't want to crank this up too far because this will break and we'll just waste our supply. So only do a little bit at a time. Maybe I want to do a little shading and add a little bit of orange in there. And I'm just doing this really lightly. I'm not pressing hard at all. Blending that yellow and orange together. All right, when I'm done, now I get to do his mane. And look, I looked at zigzag lines to show lots of good texture. Or you could do wavy lines. This one's wavy. Or zigzag. I'm taking it from his face all the way to the edge.
Maybe I'll go grab some of my orange and start overlapping those lines. You see how I'm rotating my paper? It's easier to do that. He's really getting a lot of texture in his mane. We can see it doesn't look smooth. It looks like it's really bumpy. I'll get one more color, Get my light brown. All those different colors, lots of variety. All right, did I get everything? I think that looks pretty good. So I've got a couple different things. I could use curvy or I could use these zigzag lines. And I always started with my lightest color and worked to the darkest. So yellows, oranges, browns. But if you were doing like pinks, pinks, purples, make sure you start with the lightest one first. Now we're gonna get our scissors and we're gonna just cut these corners off to make it rounded. So I'm just taking my scissors Cutting those, yeah, those little corners off. Give them like an oval shape. Put all that to the side. Now we're gonna get out our pop, our tongue dish. All right, I'm gonna need to get three pipe cleaners. We are going to do our legs and our tails. So two legs and a tail. What I'm gonna do is start with my one leg. I'm placing my pipe cleaner, if I'm kind of near the center, and I'm holding it here in place. Now with my hand, I'm going to wrap that pipe cleaner around the popsicle stick one time. If I keep going multiple times, I'm gonna have shorter legs. If you want shorter legs, you can do that, but I think I'm gonna keep it like that because I wanna curve my legs. Then I'll grab the other pipe cleaner place it on the tongue depressor. And when I wrap it around, I'm pulling this tight to get it nice and snug. So I have two legs. And now I'll do the tail. Tail's at the end. So I don't need to place it in the center. If I want, I can just put my end there and wrap around nice and tight a few times. Then I can decide what kind of tail do I want. Do I want a zigzag tail going up? Or do I want a spirally tail? And I can think about my feet. Do I want them coming out? Curving around? And see if he stands. You might have to move the legs forward if they were, you know, too close to the back. It might not work. You might have to slide these guys forward. So now let's get our head out. Right here, we're just going to make a little foot. So we have something for our pipe or our popsicle to sit on. So I just taken the bottom and I'm folding it up a little bit, like a finger space, giving a nice crease. Then I'm gonna get my glue stick. I'm gonna lay some glue right here at the bottom. Now I can take that over and I'm gonna get that glue right like that. And he might need to sit for a second and dry, but he's standing, he's working. So we were able to create a sculpture of a lion like Sandy Calder did using found objects. We created texture, we created form, 
three dimension means there's a height, a width, and a depth. Now thinking of this, what else could you turn this into? Are there other animals you could make? Do you think you could make people with this? Probably.